He's fiscally conservative and socially cool. GQ magazine described him as absurdly honest and smart. Gary Johnson isn't the norm in politics. He's the future. You know it, Gary Johnson. And he is also running for senator in New Mexico, the libertarian candidate for the state he governed for two very successful terms back in the late 90s and early 2000s in an exclusive first national interview. Since filing to run with us now, the libertarian candidate for senator from New Mexico, Gary Johnson. We did call his opponents, by the way, the incumbent Democratic Senator Martin Heinrich and uh, his Republican challenger, Nick Rich, for interviews. We still haven't heard back from either, uh, but we hope to have each and both on the show. Governor, very good to have you. Thank you. Thanks, Neil. Uh, this was uh, an unexpected uh, opportunity, completely unplanned. But uh, if it were laid on your plate that you might get be able to be elected to the U.S. Senate and be the swing vote in the Senate, uh, I dare say you'd seriously have to consider doing that, and, and I am doing it. I think there needs to be a voice in Washington when it comes to spending, when it comes to the deficit. I really think that uh, the deficit is the biggest issue facing this country right now, and the eventuality of continuing to print about 25 cents out of every dollar that we spend at some point is going to be horrible inflation and that's going to be well, the worst tax of all. Let's say you made it. I'm sorry, sir, but let's say you made it. Would you vote? Uh, you would be a libertarian. We've never had a libertarian senator before. Would you vote with Republicans? Would you vote with Democrats? Well, uh, I'd like to think I'd take the best of uh, both sides, that I'd be sitting in the middle, and uh, I'd sure be calling Trump out on what he has to say about immigration, what he has to say about spending, what he has to say about free markets and these tariffs. I, I just think that this is... Uh, crazy and All that right, it so has if you were led senator to now, if you were senator now the Brett Kavanaugh uh, Supreme Court nomination is coming up would you vote for him uh, based on what I know uh, I would vote for him yes okay now another aspect of this is government you as a two-term governor very successful one in New Mexico uh, you vetoed I think close to what 900 different bills you were very big on small government um, let people decide what they want um, obviously government is out of control uh, and it's a, a fault of both parties as we've discussed uh, uh, many times throughout your career what would you do to try to rein it in because right now we are looking at trillion dollar deficits for at least the next few years we're looking at trillion dollar deficits and where where is the senator pounding the table saying that this is uh, unacceptable I am not intending to go to the US Senate and be a wallflower uh, I intend to speak out on these issues I'm, I'm upset why is there a Department of Homeland Security TSA every time I go through TSA uh, the non-constitutional zone uh, I get terribly upset uh, the federal government is growing we should be reducing the size and scope of the federal government uh, and it seems to me that Republicans or Democrats, it doesn't matter that uh, the size and scope of federal government is increasing. And everybody sees that. All right. Well, you know, you're, you're not polling too badly. This is the fact that you're a late entrant. Uh, one poll, I think, has you at 22 percent compared to the Republican uh, uh, challenger at 29 percent. There's Nick Rich. Uh, the, the incumbent senator is at 40 7 percent. But that isn't too shabby in a state that Hillary Clinton beat Donald Trump uh in 2016 by eight points so how how do you win over those who who look at you and say been there done that how do you avoid the tim valenti fate where he wanted to come back into the governor's mansion and loses a primary well this is a uh, really pivotal on money uh look it's not about out raising your opponent uh, but it's having parity when it comes to money and in the presidential races uh, look, in 2016, we raised $12 million to Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton's $1.8 billion apiece. So I'm afraid there is a reality attached to having money and being able to get your message out. And look, well, you I'm the underdog in this. You got 10% of the uh, vote in your home state that, uh, in, a, in, a, in an election like that. So that's not too bad. But uh, there are a lot of people just say your time has come and gone, been there, done that. You're kind of quaint with the the legalized pot thing and some other views of it, but but that you, you don't excite them as a senator you say <laughs> well we'll see neil i mean this is I'm putting it on the line right press, you can't win so if, you, you can't win if you don't line up uh, and but i'm lining up i'm line putting up. it on the line governor you said that you wouldn't line up you were done running for office after your last presidential quest what changed 
Well, here's, look, uh, I've always said I, I don't want to be a U.S. Senator because I think the job involves bellying up to the trough. And that's the last thing we need is more spending. We need to reduce the size and scope of the federal government. So what's laid on my plate is arguably being one of the most powerful U.S. senators right out of the chute because of being the swing vote and how close uh, it will be between Democrats and Republicans and how the swing vote might actually determine uh, Senate outcomes. That's terribly exciting, in my opinion. And uh, this is a race that, for me, will be about nine weeks. Uh, I can do anything for nine weeks. Well, also, you're very physically fit. You climb mountains, marathons, you know, God bless you. But, I mean, you're going to have to rely on a lot because you might not get a lot of money and then and there might be resistance to a third-party candidate. But you, let's say you do make it and into the Senate and you're in the middle of this trade war that could still be going on. Do you think the president is taking the right approach, getting hard line with China, hard line with, uh, well, gosh, a lot of people? No, I don't. I, I think free trade is free trade and that the, that the issues of intellectual property can be handled in different ways. And uh, look, uh, we should be all about free trade. We should all be about free market. The private sector does everything better than the public sector. Everything. Uh, and yet we continue to expand government. We continue to expect government to do things that uh, really it's incapable of doing. All right, so you want smaller government. Uh, you also want to rein in entitlements and their growth. You know how that has gone in the past on Capitol Hill. Who are you more aligned with? That was something that Paul Ryan was big at trying to curb, and you know how that went. Well, I'd like to think I'm aligned with most people. Let's not forget that the majority of Americans today, 45% of Americans that register to vote are registering as independent. Where is the representation when it comes to Democrats and Republicans? And I have dedicated myself to the inequality or the, just the fact that we are a party system. Paraphrasing George Washington, he said, look, if, this, if our country ever devolves into political parties, we're done for. Well, you have a lot of retirees. Uh, and that's what has governor, happened. You have a lot of and retirees in your state. How are you going to tell them? What are you going to tell them? I'm going to have to curb the growth of these entitlements for you or just down the road look at that as a possibility? Well, I've always been well served by telling the truth, and I think that that is the truth. Look, we've got to curb the growth in these, uh, um, in these policies or we're going to find ourselves in, in a situation where... We're going to continue to overspend, and at some point, inflation is going to come to bear on all of this, all right. and that's going to be the worst tax of all, where the money in your pocket doesn't buy a thing because of, the, because of how inflated it becomes. We'll watch very closely. Governor, it's always good catching up with you. <laughs> thank you, Neil. All it was right. good catching up with you. All right, be well uh, again. Unexpected, but thank you. <laughs> it's always good having you. Well, again, that call is out to uh, uh, the other challengers in this race, including the incumbent Senator Martin Heinrath. If we hear back, of course, they're welcome anytime, anywhere.